So we will be talking about living in this moment as a Christian, as a Christian believer, as a Jesus believer. We will be go through some parts of the Bible, as you may know, and we will be talking more about how to show the light of the world to people. Uh, can be in the neighborhood, can be in our work, can be our home, can be within our parents' home, can be anywhere, really. Uh, first of all, I want to thank everybody who came on Thursday. Thank you for the time together. Very great to have uh, everybody together in prayer. We praise. We pray for people. Uh, so I really encourage you to bring any testimonies that you may have maybe to me and we can discuss how to share it to others in this church because testimony is very great to, to keep our faith warm, keep uh, seeing the word of God being spread among people. So any testimonies you might have, please speak to me and we will um, share in the church, maybe not here in public, maybe when we have a prayer time. But uh, I really encourage you to, to share your testimonies. Um, yes, so we will be talking about the light of Jesus and how can we practice uh, nowadays. So the first topic we will cover we will be that Jesus teaches us to be the light of the world. It's more a recap about what we've been through last Sunday, but I included some verses to you to understand the context was talked in these verses. So it's a very known verse and uh, very lovely uh, to, to talk about. So it's the John chapter 3, verse 16 to 21st. For God so loved the world that he gave his own one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the very good. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. So returning here to verse 16, to understand a little bit more of the context of these verses. Um, so God loved the world and gave his only one and only son, that whoever is believing in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So what he's saying here is what we covered the last Sunday about uh, that Jesus came came into the earth, and thank you Dan, because Dan remember very, very well on the first chapter of John uh, that says that the light was coming into the world and was in the world, but the world did not recognize him, did not receive him. We saw this in the last sermon. And we are seeing here uh, that Jesus came uh, for those uh, to, to give people eternal life, to, to deliver them for sin. And sin is against everything that God loves. And we need to understand that, because uh, when we sin, we are doing something against God himself. And this, Jesus, when he came, is for those who believe in Jesus, shall not perish, but have eternal life. 
And it's very interesting because the following verse is saying that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. But if you're seeing the uh, previous verse, it's saying um, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. But what about those who do not believe in Jesus? What about for those who still not believe in him? So when I say believes in him, I say that someone hears about the gospel and decides to not believe in him. I'm not saying about those probably who never heard about it. Uh, we are not touching this subject. I'm touching about who listen to the voice of God through the gospel, but did not want it to receive him, to recognize him. These are the ones we will talk about. And then it's trying to say here that when Jesus first came, actually the plan is not to condemn anybody when he was in this earth. He came to save people, to show salvation. This is what he's talking about. And then, of course, after that, we'll have a judgment. We'll have, for every person, we'll have a judgment if they do or they did not believe. And then, is is saying over here on the chap on the verse 18, that whoever believes in him is not condemned, and whoever does not believe stands condemned already. And this is what we just told. How Jesus in this chapter, in this verse, is saying that uh, that God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. And then in this next verse is saying, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Looks like something is going on over here. It's, it's not what it means. It's like what he's saying here is when Jesus first came in this earth was not to condemn anybody but to save. So after that will be a time that will be uh, a judgment where there will be a judgment. But when Jesus came, he did not come to judge anybody. And then, of course, whoever does not believe in stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. So we need to understand that in, because we need to share the gospel. When we share the gospel, we need to understand that do not believe are already condemned because they decided to not believe. They decided to not take this step. And there is yes, heaven and hell. We need to understand that. And we need to understand when people don't believe in that, there is two, two um, different places that you can go after death, after your work have been done here in this earth. Or you go to heaven or you go to hell. And this is where we come because we need to proclaim that the light has come into the world in verse 19, where people, people loved darkness instead. We need to understand that we as a church, we need to talk to people that the light is Jesus, that the light is the only one who can save us, is Jesus Christ. And people need to understand that because sometimes they are in their own belief, they have their own religion, they have their own a type of worship to other to other saints or to other gods or whatever they believe. I talked in the last prayer time about uh, the Afro religions in Brazil, and uh, this is why I asked some of you the emails because I wanted to share with you uh, one of the article on BBC about that we were talking about that. Many of uh, these Afro religions in Brazil, they believe that there is a benevolent spirit that is not our God, that uh, uh, 
act like uh, as a messenger between heaven and earth. And they say he's a benevolent spirit. But in the same title, they say he's a god. And how can you... And in the, in the article, it says that the evangelical churches in Brazil hate or have some prejudice against these religions in Brazil. And actually, what they say is Christians have problem with this, this type of religions in Brazil. But I will share with you uh, after uh, later on that actually there is no other God uh, besides our God. So our God is the only one. And there is, we need to believe that there is God Father, there is God Son, and there, there is God Holy Spirit. And if we say there is another God apart from this, so we are doing another religion, doing another uh, type of belief, and this is not included in the light. So the light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light. So people created many times religion or beliefs around maybe the Bible or around uh, things that they loved about the Bible. So they picked up some, some things and they created sometimes religion about that. And if you go to these religions, many of them believe in the Bible. Many of them follow some parts of the Bible. I was Mormon once, I told you many times that I was Mormon once and I could see after a while that I was doing the I was believing a wrong thing why I was believing a wrong thing because they believe uh, in a prophet mostly rather than Jesus rather than the gospel itself so we need to understand there is a light there is Jesus and we can only find him in the gospel we can only find him in prayer and we need to understand when we talk to others they are in darkness they loved the darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil this is the point the deeds are evil our deeds even though we are christians sometimes we sleep in a sin because our deeds are evil we are sinful person and we need to understand that. So Jesus is teaching us how to be the light to others, how to be the light of the world to others, how to live the light in this earth. And we see here that uh, people love darkness instead of light because they did. So the next point of our um, sermon is uh, how can we change as a Christian, to be the light of the world. Well, I, you can say I'm already changed. I'm already um, a new creature, as the Bible says. But you can, uh, you're gonna think about um, these steps that we're going through, and mainly, many of them can be very useful to our lives. So we will go to a four-step process of changing of thoughts and way of living. So how Jesus wants us to live in this earth. And the first one is about one very nice verse that I mentioned in the last <laughs> prayer time. I'm very thankful for remembering this, but actually I had in my mind to put that. Thank you very much, Dan. Uh, but uh, was about this. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your body as living sacrifice, holy and pleasant to God. This is your true and proper worship. Whoop. I think I forgot the second one. Sorry about that, I guess. Um, yeah, sorry about that. So what he's saying here is about... I will, I will find out uh, the second verse. Sorry about that. What I have here is about offer ourselves as a sacrifice is about offering us to be the sacrifice instead of offering animals in the past what happened in the past was 
that they had um, an animal that they offered to God. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. And what happened is they had an animal that they offered God because of sin. So uh, the priest, the high priest, was offering to God in t in, because of sin of the nation. And then what Paul is saying to the Romans here is about how to be this light of this world, how to be the light in this earth. So is to offer our body as a living sacrifice to God in order to please him. Are we going to kill ourselves? It's not our, what is meant to do. It's about offering us living sacrifice. As a living sacrifice. So in this life, as we are alive, we offer ourselves to God in order to please God. In order to, to make, you know, uh, worth it to him. Not that we are worth it, but we offer something to God. Is our lives our bodies. And in the second verse, he's saying here, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So what he's saying here is, uh, just finishing that, that he your true and proper worship is your offering to God, your, your body as a sacrifice. And then it comes um, the second point, the not confirmed to the pattern of this world. So how can we change our thoughts, our thinking, our way of thinking? Well, we can change by not conforming to the pattern of this world. What it means by that is, whatever the world says, we need to do what God wants us to do. So if the world uh, is based on, let's say, on, on money or whatever they, they are, uh, we must follow another path. That is not what is involved with this. We need to understand that we do not need to confirm to the pattern of the world in order to leave what God wants us from us. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the first step, renewing of our mind. Everything we think, everything that is in, your, in our mind, we need to understand that if it is for God's will, if it is for God's glory, if it is against God, if it is towards what God wants for us to do, if we are thinking uh, about the light or about the darkness, what we are thinking of mostly of the time. This is what is talking through us. So what are you thinking? Mostly of the time is a good point. And then when you renew your mind, what is happening is then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasant and perfect will. So when we renew our minds, then we will see the glory of God. Then we will see what God wants from us. There's only one way. We need to change ourselves, our ways of thinking. How to live the, world, the light of the world? We need to be the change. We need to show people uh, what they thinking might not be the right thing to think, might not be the light. There might be darkness, evil darkness. So this is the first point, changing of, of things. And when we change our thoughts, we need to, to understand that changing our thoughts includes our heart also. So when we change our heart towards what God wants from us, 
is the main point because changing our hearts it it shares in our whole body what god wants from us and we need and when people see us they see a light shining they see someone that is being changed so they do not see anymore only a person they see a new creature a new person changed by the gospel of Jesus so this is the first point the second point is about um, changing ourselves so is uh, in John chapter 12 in verse 23 to 26 first we will need to read that in bits so Jesus replied the hour, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified very truly I tell you unless a kernel of wet falls to the ground and dies it remains only a single seed but if it dies it produces many seeds anyone who loves their life will lose it while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life whoever serves me must follow me and where i am my servants also will be my father will honor the one who serves me so first of all jesus is talking about his own death in this first verse and he's saying to the disciples that the hour has come to the son of man to be glorified and here he's saying about the process of his death and process of our death what i mean by that is not physical death is about spiritual changing of mind changing of being and then he says here very truly i tell you unless a kernel of wet falls to the ground and dies it remains only a single seed well you can go to a farmer and ask what is this process about of a kernel of wet to be falling in the ground and turn in a wet crop or something like that and then the crops gives more fruits and more seeds and then the seeds fall over in the ground again and then it dies and turns out to be a wet crop and then it goes further on and there is the process actually i have a very good study about it i hope to send you on the email uh, very soon but it's about that that process how the kernel dies how is this process why the kernel needs to die in order to be raised as a wet crop so how it happens so there is a kernel there is a seed and then it needs to die in terms of like the seed is not anymore a seed it turns in the wet crop so this is the process Jesus is talking about. And then when it turns to the wet, the, the leaves of it, there is some parts of uh, um, like kernel on it. It's like uh, when it falls down in the ground again, it dies and turns into a new wet crop. And this is the, the lovely part of it because Jesus needs to die in order to give us light to give us life a new life and then we as a christian need to die in a spiritual sense not in a physical sense that not that we need to find you know uh, something to die of but it's because we need to die in a spiritual sense in order to give you others life also we need to die to ourselves. This is what I mean. And then it's saying here, anyone who loves their life will lose it. Why anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. It's not about you, oh, I hate myself. Not about that. It's about something else. It's hating your life in a spiritual sense. So I hate my life in terms that I won't do it what I want. I won't do it. 
in terms of I won't do evil. I won't do what Jesus wants me to do. I need to hate sin. I need to hate my nature. I need to hate what I want in order to achieve what Jesus wants from me. And this, when we hate our life, we have eternal life, which is another life. So Jesus is giving us another life. And Jesus says on the verse 35, then Jesus told them, you are going to have the light just a little while longer. Walk while you have the light before dark, darkness overtake you. Whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. Believe in the light while you have the light, so that you may become children of light. When he had finished speaking, Jesus left and hid himself from them. So this is the resume of what we've been saying. So you are going here, Jesus is explaining him then about his death. That he needs to die in order to give light to others. And then walk while you have the light before darkness overtakes you. What they say is believe now that you have the opportunity because there will be a time where you will not have. And he's saying here, whoever walks in the dark does not know where they are going. Well, we, we covered that in the last sermon about light and darkness. So believe in the light while you have the light. So that you may become children of light. Remember that we said that not everybody is children of God. So children of light is the same thing. So this is what we need to understand. So change of thoughts is the first. Change of ourselves is the second. And the third. Well, when tempted, tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and intent. And the last, then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. This is the process of sinning. So I should have said before, but James in the first chapter, so he's saying about the process of sinning. What is like in the spiritual realm when we sin? What is like uh, that we say sometimes, oh, but I feel like God is tempting me. Well, as we can see in the text here, God does not tempt anyone. The only one who does that is the devil. And each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire. There are two points here. The devil tempts us, yes. But remember what we said the last sermon? Our evil desire tempts us. And sometimes, many times, drag us away from the presence of the Lord. And this is very hard, church, because we need to understand that in order to battle, in order to fight these evil desires that surround us, that take sometimes our heart captives. And we need to understand now we are a new creature, a new person in Jesus, that we must try to not do this kind of behavior. Evil desire is not something that God wants us to do. And then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's full grown, gives birth to death. Not physical death, again, it's spiritual death. So we, when we sin, we give birth to death. In spiritual realm we are not anymore with Jesus let's say in this way we are not anymore in the light we are in the darkness 
So this we need to understand in order to battle, in order to fight. And this is very important. The first step is about how can we be changed then? So uh, we will go through this reading. And uh, now John's is in Mark chapter, chapter 2. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, How is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot, so long as they have with him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them. And on that day, they will fast. No one seals a pair of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins. What Jesus is telling here is about our birth, rebirth, spiritual rebirth. When we are sinners, when we don't know God or Jesus that much, what happens is we are in darkness, so we are old. We do not um, know him, we do not met him, so we don't know what the light he can give us. And here, what Jesus is saying, when you are converted to the new path, to the light of Jesus, what happens is you need to be renewed, you need to be changed, because you cannot put new wine into old skin, wine skin. You cannot put wine, a new wine, a fresh wine, because if not, would would um, be ruined. The wine skin would be ruined, and you probably would lose all your wine. And this is what happens here. What Jesus is telling us is, if you not, you do not change. You cannot be the light. If you do not change, you cannot have this new wine that I'm giving you. The new wine is, is what he's giving us. And we need to have this. We need to understand that we cannot have old garment. We cannot have an old wine skin. We need to be new in order to be the light. In order to the light shining us. We need to be new creatures. We need to be new. And this is where... Uh, we understand this. So changing our thoughts and way of living is a very important decision to all of us as a Christian. Because we need to understand that if we do not change our paths in terms of our decisions, our acts, our deeds, how we behave outside the church, how we behave inside the church, we cannot have the light of Jesus because the wine of Jesus, the new wine of Jesus cannot uh, be within us because we are old. We cannot bear. So if we are new, a new creature, we can have this. And the last point that we will be talking about is that two process. Uh, on how to be light to others. And this is a very important thing, because how can we share the gospel of Jesus? And we will see here, Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them how to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. 
this is very important church because we are not here only to make believers <laughs> there are so many people who believes in the in the name of jesus uh, many times they are not uh, in the church jesus is talking about disciples jesus is talking about another thing he's talking about someone who believes in him who follows probably you or follows what you are doing in your life and see that you what you are doing are good and follow these steps so the disciples were following jesus steps because jesus what were doing was doing good was doing was showing the light to them and then we must follow that pattern so there is a let's say a master is not uh, what I meant to be, but there is a person who knows how to guide people through the light. So they are not only believers, they are disciples. How many of us can tell to anybody that we have disciples? I have one disciple, let's say. Or we cannot say because normally what we do as a church sometimes is we show the gospel to the person we are happy with this and then that's it we need to make disciples we need to make people follow what we follow in order to obtain the, the light of jesus and baptizing then the name of father and the son and the holy spirit is a good process also because when we baptize we raise up as a new creature and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you so look at the process here we make disciples is the first point we baptize them and then we teach them to obey everything and then there is a assurance that I'm with you always to the very end of the age what Jesus means on the end of everything. He will be with us. He will be protecting us. He will be guiding us in this process also. But we need to understand that we as a church need to make disciples. Every one of us. Because we are the light. We need to show people the light. And the last think is a very um, interesting one <laughs> it's actually only one verse but it's to you to understand this first corinthians 11 chapter uh, 11 verse 1 is saying follow my example as i follow the example of christ um, how many of us can share this with the church that we have let's say a person that follow our examples as we follow the examples of Christ so we are just affirming what we've seen we're just affirming that Paul in this verse is teaching others to follow his example because he follows the example of Christ so how we as a disciples because we are disciples we are believers we are here because of Jesus how we now the light of the world can explain to somebody this because they need to see in us something that's changed their ways of living they need to see in us something that change something they might do so if we do not show this if in our thoughts if in our saying if in our acts we are not showing this to people around us. We need urgently change our ways of living, changing our hearts, changing our thoughts, changing our saying, changing our acts. Because this is what Jesus wants for us. And to the point that we need to say this to people, is to 
It's too deep, church. Imagine you saying to a disciple, follow my example, as I follow the example of Christ. Imagine that. Can you say that today? We need to understand that in order to obtain. If you, do, if you cannot say that, then we need to change as soon as possible. Well, this is uh, today preaching. We will pray and we will worship again.